Before the exclusive interview with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, some background. The latest U.S. interview with Bashar al-Assad, the first since he agreed to hand over his chemical weapons. But already the Syrian president seems to be attaching conditions. It needs a lot, a lot of money. Some estimated about a billion for the Syrian stockpile. We're not experts in that regard, but that the estimates that we've had uh, recently. Syria's leader wants that billion dollar bill paid for by the Americans. Under the agreement reached between Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his US counterpart John Kerry, Syria has till the middle of next year to destroy its chemical weapons, not a year from now. An Assad sponsor and ally, Russian leader Vladimir Putin, today seemed to be rowing back on claims he could guarantee Syrian compliance. Syria said that it is ready to join the International Chemical Weapons Convention. These are practical steps which has been done by the Syrian authorities. And whether we will be able to complete the process, there cannot be any 100 percent guarantee. The United Nations weapons inspectors report seemed to implicate the Assad regime in last month's chemical weapons attack that killed 1,400 men, women and children. Most damning, it traced the trajectory of the missiles carrying the sarin gas warheads. One launched into the southeast of Damascus, the other further west. Both seem to come from territory firmly in regime hands, a Republican guard base on a hill overlooking the capital. Despite that, the Syrian leader is calling the report unrealistic. The whole story doesn't even hold together. It's not realistic. So, no, we didn't. Uh, in one word, we didn't use any chemical weapons in the Ghouta, because if you want to use it, you would ha harm your uh, troops. You would have harmed the tens of thousands of civilians living in Syria, in Damascus. Without apportioning blame, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has condemned the chemical weapons yeah, attack in Damascus as a war crime. But while diplomatic wrangling goes on, the deaths of 1,400 civilian men, women and children remains unpunished.